If isolation has been one of the signature effects of the pandemic, it also helped highlight the importance of technology. Many children are relying on computers to go to school. Many people have traded in their office for the home office, myself included. And for lots of families, the only way to see each other has been through FaceTime or other video chat programs. But none of that happens if you don't have good internet access. More than half the residents of Deep East Texas don't have access to broadband internet. But the Deep East Texas Council of Governments is embarking on a massive project to fix that. Well, joining us now is its executive director, Lonnie Hunt. Lonnie, how are you? Uh, it, I'm, I'm happy to be here, always happy to talk about rural broadband in East Texas, Deep East Texas in particular. Let's start at the beginning. Tell me about the origins of this project. Well, you know, for years, uh, folks in our part of the state have complained that we didn't have good internet, we don't have good cell phone service, uh, we don't understand why even some of our major highways, for example, I live in Crockett, uh, our office is in Lufkin, it's about a 50 mile trip, and about two thirds of that way along a major state highway, State Highway 7, which is a major east-west artery in the Texas highway system, there's no cell phone service for most of my trip between Crockett and Lufkin. And you would think by now we would at least have signals along our major highways. But of course, even then, most of our residents don't live along a major highway. They're back off the major roads, you know, in the rural areas. And, and we just have a tremendous need for uh, broadband internet uh, back in these rural areas. And a lot of the service is not all that great inside our cities uh, across our region. So I think a lot of people were aware that there's a problem. About three years ago, our board of directors, the DETCOG board, uh, came together and said, uh, you know, it's time somebody did something about this. And it was becoming more and more obvious that no one was just going to ride in and take care of this problem for us. So what makes you think that DETCOG will have the ability or the resources to pull off a project that a lot of companies who could profit off of it won't take on? Well, there's the key. In rural areas, it will never be profitable. Uh, again, we didn't get into this because we wanted to go into the broadband business. Uh, if that's what it takes to make sure that our people get service, we're willing to do that but we're not in it to make a profit. Uh, we're, one of our guiding principles from the start has been that everyone has to be able to participate. We can't have cherry picking where uh, a, a provider comes in and says, well, I can serve this little group of people or this community, but I can't serve those folks. They're too far you know, uh, off the main grid, so to speak. The other thing that we, have learned from that initial study, the only way to really be able to justify service to everybody in our region is to leverage the entire region. Deep East Texas is a collection of 12 counties over 10,000 square miles. We're larger than six states geographically, but we're sparsely populated. Nevertheless, you add all our population up and it's 385,000 people, which is not an insignificant population, even though it's spread out over a large area. So we have to leverage that whole population of our region in order to be able to guarantee service to every single person within that region. More with Lonnie Hunt after the break, including how much money this project will take and when it might break ground. 